Hi guys, just Tim from 2J Field Arm 4x4. I just thought, this is in the workshop doing some work here on a Saturday, and I've seen the CBT pulled apart in the corner. I thought I'd give you guys a quick rundown on CBT transmissions, um, common things that go wrong with them and stuff. CBT transmissions are being found in more and more vehicles these days, and, and, and most places just throw them away and put in another one, um, or a second hand one. I'd never ever recommend putting in a CB, second hand CBT um, unless it's more cost effective to do so, um, which isn't actually that common. Generally, it's just as cost effective to repair or rebuild a transmission if you can find someone to do it. Um, these obviously come in, the most common vehicles that we see the problems with are the, the Pulsar, which is one behind me here, which this isn't out of. Um, T32 X-Trails, which is one above me here. T31 X-Trails, um, Outlanders, things like that. Uh, Lancers in the early days had issues, but they're generally pretty good. The main reason with the T31s and the Pulsars is the early days, it wasn't part of the service schedule to replace the CV2 transmission fluid. They were sealed for life. Um, they weren't, the fluid goes to crap, they score the pumps and they slip. Um, but I'll run through that as I'll run through some of the components here. So I've only got here some bits and pieces, I don't want to go messing that up too much. Um, this is the pan off this transmission and you can see down in here, debris, metal debris, um, which isn't good obviously. Now the CVT, CVT transmission, like a lot of automatic transmissions, rely on oil pressure, but these even more so. Um, as soon as the oil pressure starts to die off, they start to slip, metal debris go through the system and they just kill everything in them. When we rebuild and we replace all the components inside, the valve body, the pump, the pulleys, the belt, bearings, everything, because they're stuck. That's it, you've got to start again. Um, so here's an oil pump out of a Pulsar CVT transmission, JFO15E is generally what they're referred to as well. Um, I haven't got it apart, but if you pull it apart, in here there's a little piston that slides up and down. Now, normally you think it would have something like a seal on it, like a Teflon seal or an O-ring or a ring, like a piston ring, to seal it as it goes up and down to, to keep the pressure, but they don't. They're more of an interference fit, and as soon as the balls start to score up in them, that's it. The pressure bleeds by, and they start to slip and cause other issues. This is generally the, where the failure starts. It normally starts with scoring in the pump or the valve body, and it's generally caused by lack of servicing. As I said, in the T31 X trials, etc., they weren't part of the service schedule to change the transmission fluid, um, and that was the big problem. Later on, they realised that, and it's now part of the service schedule to replace it. Um, as to service intervals, it depends on the vehicle. We normally sort of say 40 to 60,000 kilometres. Um, after we do a reco on a transmission, we get them in after 1,000 k's just for a pan removal and an inspection. And then after 40,000 k's, we recommend another fluid change. Um, we warrant them, used to warrant them with a 24 month, 24,000 k warranty, now they're 30,000, 30, 30 month. Um, but you've got to make sure you do that 1,000 k service or you avoid your warranty. And then you've got to make sure after 40,000 k's you service them again too. Another 1,000 warranty period, if you want it to last, you've got to do it. These aren't cheap to rebuild either. So that's a pump. Um, that's a rear housing and pulleys and stuff mounting. Let's have a look at this. Pretty funny. Now, a CBT transmission works, and there's two, how it works, and there's two different two different drives. They come in a belt drive, which this is a belt. Now, I think of this. This is a couple of little metal pieces that throw it. All these little things here. Every one of them is an individual piece, almost like razor blades that sit in tied there. As soon as one of these aluminium strips come off, the, these stainless steel strips come off the side, this all comes apart and goes everywhere. And you, you, for guys that have pulled pans off CBT transmissions, they'd see these like little razor blade pieces sitting in the bottom, and that's what these are. This is a belt drive, and I don't have a chain here, but they also have a chain drive system on them too. Now the way they work is down here. I have two pulleys. And the belt normally sits between them on these cones and runs up and down them and works on oil pressure. The oil pressure keeps the belt on it and it, and, and it drives the pulleys. Now, these pulleys um, have some inherent problems too. In here, which I don't have the tool here at the moment to pull it up and down, but inside here, there's a, a piston ring. Think of a, a cylinder bore. There's a, there's a bore and a piston and a ring and it slides up and down the inside of this here. The rings do break. Um, but generally what happens, also, these are on a, on a um, keyway on the main shaft that this bolt's on. This bolt here bolts on a keyway, um, and that keyway wears, the balls roll out of it, hold it on the keyway, and it fails, and that's when you get the tunk, 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 when the transmissions go. Generally, when we rebuild them, um, we put a brand new pulley set in them, um, but if we're recoing a pulley set, we also put a roll pin in there rather than the balls. Don't seem to wear as much. Um, people with CVT transmissions quite often get pressure coats, and most 
Well, just about all codes for CV2 transmissions are pressure codes. And we see people that they'll go to either A, a mechanic that's not aware, or B, Google, and they'll say, okay, I've got a shift solenoid A fault code, or a, a something like that. And they'll put a shift solenoid, pull out their valve body, and this is the valve body. They'll pull out their valve body, put a new solenoid on it, which is one of these, and it doesn't fix it. Now, the reason why they throw that code isn't because the solenoid's faulty. A valve body, which I'm not gonna pull this one apart at the moment, because this is in the process of getting rebuilt. Um, a valve body is a set of plates inside two bits of aluminium essentially and holes that the oil flows through. And inside here is a, is a piston that the solenoid activates, it slides up and down a bore. Now generally what happens is when the metal goes through the transmission, it also goes through the valve body and it scores the bore. So it's throwing a pressure solenoid code because there's not enough pressure to push that solenoid all the way back because the pressure's bleeding off in the valve body. So just because you've got a shift solenoid code, doesn't mean it's a shift solenoid. 90% of the time, probably 99% of the time, it's actually an issue with the valve body and the transmission itself. And, and that's just the code it throws. They throw these codes because they're bleeding off pressure and they don't necessarily have a pressure code in the system to monitor that because they're getting pressure at the sensor, but when they get here, they're not. So that's generally why they throw those codes. In the, in the pulsar, another common part that breaks is these shafts. Um, this one's okay. But yeah, I just wanted to give you a quick rundown on CV2 transmissions. Now, they are a good transmission. Yes, they have their inherent problems, but like everything, they have to be serviced properly. If you do not service your CVT transmission properly, you're gonna have problems, there's no doubt about it. They're also no good for towing. Don't buy an extra hour to tow. Um, you'll kill the transmission. They hate it, they just don't like pulling extra loads heavier than the vehicle. Um, so don't buy CVT for towing. Um, and make sure you service it, guys. If you've got a problem with your CVT, give us a call. Most times we can rebuild them. There's a few vehicles we don't. There's a few vehicles that we actually just put new transmissions in because it's a really a parts availability thing. We can't get parts of every CVT transmission and, and availability on them is hard. And they are expensive too. Um, so there's a couple that we just replaced the transmissions on. Um, torque converters can be another issue, which I don't have one float around here at the moment. Uh, no, I don't. Um, I don't have a torque converter here at the moment to show you, but torque converters can be another issue, which we also recondition now on our um, exchange or reconditioned transmissions. Not a problem at all. Thank you very much.